Greetings, uh, ladies and gentlemen. A very warm welcome to ABC World English News with me, Shvara Olako. And please do stay with us as I take you through our selected brief updates for the hour. But first, the top stories. Ethio Korea Textile Techno Park Joint Venture inaugurated. And an expert calls for ensuring quality education to counter major bottlenecks of the nation. Now, after successfully concluding his official visit to China, participating in the third Belt and Road Forum, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed and his delegation have returned home. The Premier addressed the opening session and shared the successes of the Belt and Road Initiative in Ethiopia and called for deepening of agriculture cooperation and intensifying industry center development cooperation. Prime Minister Abe also conferred with Chinese President Xi Jinping and Prime Minister of China Li Qiang. The Premier also discussed with the President of the New Development Bank Dilma Rousseff on the sidelines of the forum. During his stay in China, he visited the Yangshan port in Shanghai and the Shanghai Stock Exchange and Huawei Center in Shanghai City. Abiy Ahmed has also visited the green city of Chengdu. The Ethio-Korea Textile Techno Park, built by the collaboration of the government of Ethiopia and the Republic of Korea, was inaugurated this morning, according to the Ministry of Industry. At the launching ceremony, State Minister for Industry, Hassan Mohammed, stated that the two countries have shared friendly relations for decades. He also pointed out that Korea has been providing the necessary support for development undertakings in Ethiopia. He underlined that the country's vast human resources and market demand, the demand for multiple manufacturing industries and Ethiopia's strategic location create a favorable environment to break into the African market and the potential resources in the agricultural production industry make it convenient to engage in the agro-processing sector. The State Minister disclosed that experts of Korea who are skilled in technology, manufacturing industry, energy and infrastructure sector can support Ethiopia's industrialization endeavors. Moving on, the World Food Program has reiterated its continued support to Ethiopia's efforts to ensure food security in the country. The UN organization's pledge was reaffirmed during the meeting between the Minister of Agriculture, Girma Amenti, and Michael Denverd, WFP Regional Director for Eastern Africa. Their discussion focused on issues pertaining to food system transformation from production to consumption. During the meeting, the delivery of aid to beneficiaries was also brought to attention with a particular emphasis on addressing the pressing needs of the people in the Tigray region. Eventually, the discussion was winded up with the assertion of the WFP's commitment to supporting Ethiopia's food security initiatives, noting that the collaboration will help the country achieve its food system transformation goals in the not-too-distant future. That's according to the ministry. A security source and an Egyptian Red Crescent official told the AFP that trucks carrying humanitarian aid for war-torn and besieged Gaza started passing into the Rafah border, crossing from Egypt Saturday. Egyptian state television showed several trucks entering the gates on the 15th day of the war between Israel and Hamas, the militant movement that rules the Palestinian enclave of 2.4 million people. Israel has been bombing Gaza since Hamas' bloody surprise attack on October 7. The Islamist group stormed into Israel from the Gaza Strip and killed at least 1,400 people, mostly civilians, who were shot, mutilated or burned to death on the first day of the raid, according to Israeli officials, also taking more than 200 people hostage. 
Israel has declared a total siege on Gaza and cut off supplies of water, electricity, fuel and food, creating chronic shortages. Rafah is the only route into Gaza that's not controlled by Israel, which agreed to allow aid in from Egypt following a request from its top ally, the United States. ሙዚቃ <laughs> <laughs> ታለቅ ልቋል ይሄው ራሱ ነው እየበሰለ ያለው አሁን ደሞ አክምባሎ ማብሰያው ራሱ ሻክላ ነው ግሏል እዚህ ሚገርም ነው በቀ ከላይ ሳይ በቀ በጋለው ምጣድ ላይ ብቻ እንደዚህ ይደረገ እንደዚህ እንደዚህ ሁሉም ጋር ማዳረስ አውሎ ላይ ማዳረስ እዚህ ደሞ እንደዚህ ተገልበጥ ዳረስ አለበት አዬ ወንድ ልጅ ይባርከውና መበላት ይጀምራል ለከነኛ ደ ደንቡ እንዲ ጃገሮች የሚለዩበት ይሄኛው ልጃገረዶች የሚያረጉት ነው ይሄ ባሪጉሮ ግን ማንኛውም ሴት ያረጋል ማንኛውም ወጣት እችል መጀንጀን ይችላል ይሄ ባሪጉሮ ብቻ ያደረገ ሴት ግን ባሪጉሮ ብቻ ከሆነ እቺ ቀይ ምልክት ከለላት መንካቴ ምራሱ አንድ ምልክት ነው ማለት ነው ይሄ ከለለ በቃ መጣጨፍ ይችላል ስለዚህ እነዚህ ልጃገረዶች ላይ ግን ምንም ወርቅ የለም ማለት ይሁን እንዲ ነው እንግዲህ Welcome back you're still watching ABC World News. Now according to popular belief education remains the bedrock of every success of the society. However, in Ethiopia as a nation, quality education is still encountering major bottlenecks. In an exclusive interview with ABC Yosef Bakala who is an instructor at the Addis Ababa University sheds light on what quality education should be like and the rules expected to be carried out by relevant stakeholders. Have a listen to this. So speaking of uh, education wherever in the whole world it's unless the education quality of a certain country is properly going on nothing goes right there has been a common understanding in this regard so uh, how do you see the quality of education in the case of Ethiopia and if you think that has not been practically implemented what it should be and how do we guarantee that in the future time quality is the most important part of education if the education does not have quality i don't think that we can have the desired in you know, a product or generation so whatever progress our society has made in you know, the four centuries is the product of education so being the foundation stone of society the education brings reforms and it helps us you know progress and paves the way for innovation so we cannot undermine the advantage of having a very good quality of education in any country with that in mind the recent grade 12 national examination result has really you know shocked the whole world i could say particularly tipians and the concerned bodies are also giving updates on how this particular situation is going to be carved down in the future and for this uh, several stakeholders parents even students are you know putting a complaint forward so how do you see the result and what are we really as a country educator missing i really appreciate that they're struggling to create the right students for the universities 
They want you know, those students to fit in the university. Teachers in the university become you know, reckless because they're not being challenged by you know, outstanding students in the university. So it's good to create you know, uh, those kind of students who can fit into the university. But at the same time, we have to be careful about the number. Because in two years, in 2014 and 15, Ethiopian physical year, more than 1,600,000 people took the exam. But only like more than 57 passed. This is shocking. Because we still need to work. Not only complaining the past, we have to use the past as an input for the future. Opportunities. Finally, the Organization of Southern Cooperation stated that multilateralism is a pillar to find solutions for major questions of these days. Approached by ABC World, the Secretary General for Organization of Southern Cooperation, Mansur bin Musalam, said that education is a pillar to ensure inclusive development. Tegasanis reports. Talking to ABC Secretary General for Organizations of South Cooperation, Mansoor bin Mansalama reiterated that there is no development without education, adding the Global South needs to develop its own intelligence technologies. We needed to invest collectively in developing our own endogenous technologies. And when I say endogenous, this can be local, national, or indeed regional. The Secretary General went on saying that authentic regional integration is mandatory for effective South-South cooperation. There is no possibility for effective South-South cooperation without authentic regional integration, whether it be African, Latin American, Southeast Asian. And there is no integration without the infrastructure for the integration, just as there is no development without the infrastructure for that development. Multilateralism is a pillar to find solutions for major questions of these days, the Secretary General further stated. Multilateralism is not an opportunistic choice. It is an unavoidable necessity in order to answer the aspirations and overcome the, in, the challenges of humanity that are indivisible. You cannot tackle the major questions of our time without multilateralism, unless multilateralism is governed by three principles. It will only replicate the very injustices and the very problems it pretends, or seeks at least, to overcome. He stressed that Ethiopia being the first country to express firm interest in hosting the headquarters of the Organization of Southern Cooperation, that itself, he says, was a great demonstration of Ethiopia's commitment as a founding state of the organization. Well, dear viewers, that's all the news series for now. Thanks a lot for watching us. Bye-bye.